I, I've spent the, I, I had conversation last week with a major media company. And this is a company that has assets and in, in, in wonderful franchises. They also have a, a huge distribution network around cable and streaming and theater and whatever. Their story is, and, and, and what the, the net of that industry is, that distribution business is losing power, very similar to the way retail branch banks are losing power. The power is in is in the franchises, but getting a new franchise is a big is a big deal. And so they were saying 50% of our revenue, 80% of our profits is coming from the old business. So part of the strategy problem is just, well, wait a minute, <laughs> that, that's paying our bills, people. And, and so it's not just that people, quote, don't get it. Uh, it it's, it's, you know, you, you have to face it. But the fact of the matter is, you know, the new technologies have displaced the old technologies. You know, remember when it was bookstores and then it was Amazon retail and now it's Kindle. I mean, it, it, it used to be landlines and then it was mobile phones and now it's Wi-Fi calling. So we're all caught up in that stuff. So the real question is, how can I prosecute both retain my core business, do right by it with the understanding that it is in the last, in the latter half of its life cycle and participate in the new life cycle? Well, the common theme here is customer focus. Yes. And, and by the way, the theme you have to free yourself from is investor focus. Because yeah. from the investor's point of view, you're going to look worse before you look better. But from the customer's point of view, you need they need to see you becoming part of their future or else they have to find somebody else. You said FinTech was opening half the accounts. Well, that's that's banks not reaching out enough to their customer base to, to show them enough of a digital alternative that they can stay with them. We have these four zones, and the first zone is called the performance zone. And the performance zone's job is make the current quarter work, okay? So you're not trying to invent the future. You're, you're just trying to say, I'm going to get another quarter of performance out of my out of my organization by serving my customers through my traditional lines of business. This is the traditional part. The productivity zone is underneath the performance zone, trying to support it with both systems that make it more efficient and programs that make it more effective. This is a time when the productivity zone really has to step up on both on both sides because a shrinking business can be highly profitable for quite a long time, but only if you consistently optimize it all the time. So one of the missions of the productivity zone has got to be continual efficiency improvement through traditional Six Sigma, the kind of stuff that GE made famous. The other two zones are designed to say, well, how do we get traction on the new thing as fast as possible? And by the way, we can't get traction on everything. So which things should we invest in and which things should we not invest in? The inc that's the job of the incubation zone. The incubation zone has to get you deep enough into the opportunity, which means you have to deploy it to real customers in the real world to, to learn, is this going to be us or not us? And, and, and this is a place where, frankly, failure is an option. It's the only real zone where fast failure can be actually rewarded. You know, if you if you fail fast in the performance zone, you'll, you'll probably get fired. And if you fail fast in the productivity zone, you might have to go to jail. So, so it's like, I mean, you do not want that. But the incubation zone is where you do want it. Okay, so, but the idea there is get real world experience now as fast as you can, which is challenging because your brand is a very mature brand. It has standards, it has X, and everything is perfect. And your incubation zone is not perfect, but you have to take risk there. In fact, one of the things we say about the incubation zone is, and it makes it different from the productivity zone. The productivity zone takes extra time to reduce risk. Banks understand that. The incubation zone takes extra risk to reduce time. Now, why would you do that? And the answer is because time itself is the risk. You are now, you're now your franchise is on notice. So the incubation zone has a really important mission. It's not like an R&D theme park. We need to figure out what's our way out of here. and We need to learn fast. The transformation zone is when you pick your path forward, then, and this is, then you must focus on it and accelerate as fast as you possibly can. And that, that means superseding all your other commitments to get to the other side. And when you're incubating something, scale is the enemy, not yes. the ally. It's, it's like a little baby. You don't like ask, what's the W2 for the little baby? From a perception, which is reality to a large extent, is that a lot of the banks that have gone through any type of transformation has been because of M&A activity. So it was not well thought through. Okay, two banks came together. You know, we have to kind of change the tech stack. And then everything is, you know, cost overruns, 
time took much longer than they expected, right? And the street is like banging on their door to say, what took you so long? This is not what you promised, et cetera. So that's what we're seeing right now. Any thoughts on let that? Me add, let me add a couple of things that I think are important. So I think that what, you, what I hear in that about the incubation zone is the incubation zone, if you're not careful, becomes a place of corporate entertainment. We experiment, we do interesting things, we have great demos. I once went to a bank and a person had a 3D printer in their office because that was the, the hot thing. What what were they going to print? For, forged banknotes? I mean, what, who knows? <laughs> but but the point is, that is not incubation. That is, that is I don't know, cor- let's just call it corporate entertainment. Incubation is, I am going to take business risk by entering the market with a novel offer, which I am going to fulfill come hell or high water, and probably without with no, little profitability. So frankly, in the world you're describing it, maybe you have to acquire the asset r- r- rather than, than than develop it internally. But in either case, if it's not in the market, it's, it's, it has no meaning. There doesn't seem to be enough of a buy-in at the C-suite level. You know, there may be a bus- LOB or a, you know, a line of business person trying to drive this, you know, transformation or, you know, incubation. Or there may be somebody um, at the um, you know IT side to say I can see operational efficiencies, you know, and and then you know as as we all know you know banks are fairly siloed uh, institutions, you know they they're not there's no to your earlier point there's no universal customer view, and there has been a perhaps a misconception that if I just build a common digital layer for mobile banking and uh, you know, online banking, that makes it customer centric. No, it doesn't. Your products underneath it and your business lines are still operating as silos within the organization. Silos yes. work. The advantage yes. of a silo is I'm not listening to anybody else. I'm just doing my thing. Get the hell out of my way. I'm going to make my objectives. So that's, I mean, great. But when you're but when you're trying to um, uh, change something, silos, of course, are, 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 are the barrier. And so, yes, this is what the incubation. First of all, you can't change everything all at once. So it does have to start with one line of business. You're not going to change 12 at the same time. And that one line of business gets to have special dispensations, special funding, special relief from regular, from not from regulatory compliance that are laws, but from any, from internal regulations. Just do an inventory of all the things you think are your digital transformational opportunities and ask yourself, where are we genuinely taking risk? Where are we genuinely, genuinely engaging customers in a competitive, aggressive way? And where are we just frankly going through the motions? The metrics in each zone are different. And the success metrics, they're, they're often radically different. So in particular for incubation initiatives, it should not be about any of the classic performance metrics. You should not be measuring ROI. You should not be measuring you know, return on invested capital. It's too early. It's, it's way too early. What you want to measure is adoption. So monthly active users, weekly active users, engagement, which features of the product are they using? And you're continually trying to build a a momentum around adoption, kind of the way people in primary elections try to get enough momentum in the primary to win the nomination, that kind of idea. Let me uh, change uh, another key element that has been a uh, impediment is, um, I'll call it tribal knowledge to a large extent, but it really is manifests itself in, it manifests itself as tribal knowledge, but underlying problem is technology debt. So what I mean by that is, you know, 30 plus years of applications that were been developed, um, probably not well documented over the years, you know, different, you know, teams came and wrote code, you know, band-aids have been built over the years. And at some point you just don't even know what is there. And then, you know, you're not able to size the problem right. And then you don't even know how to transform the problem as you go forward. So, you know, it's investing enough time to understand the existing, but not too much because you can basically leapfrog and say, hey, you know, there's a better way of doing certain things and let's just evaluate those versus trying mm-hmm. to go backwards. A typical, you know, fintech in the industry, you know, it will take them about four weeks to launch a new product or a service. And for a typical financial institution, it could be six months to a year on average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and when consumer, you know, consumer demand is changing rapidly, you know, it just puts you at the back foot. And by the time you put the change in place, it's too late. 
Transformation team is the wrong structure. So let's just start there. Yeah. It's yeah. a transformation yeah. team is a product. First of all, the, the zone that's really the best at process is the productivity zone. It's yeah. really good at processes. And so the transformation team is actually a process that we can have a process for transforming. Yeah. It doesn't work. Nobody, nobody can apply a process and transform any, it, that's not, that's not what happens. So that, so that's sort of a mistake. So what is the right structure? Well, go back to the venture successes because the venture people are really good at this. It's a BU structure. So the thing that's new has to be an independent BU. Now, eventually it will scale to become a product line, but the performance zone and the productivity zone are typically organized functionally. I have sales, I have marketing, I have you know back office, whatever it is. They're not organized like BUs. They, 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 they distribute products, but you start, when you start with a BU, it's like I have sales, marketing, it, it's all inside my own my own entity. And by the way, if I do an acquisition, I might use their, you know, uh, organizational structure to build in the incubation zone. The transformation activity is as you take that business to scale, you must fold it into a functional structure eventually. So yes. eventually, you, you you're not going to have at scale be used. You're going to have scale. You have product lines within a functional matrix. But but if you try to start with a functional matrix. There's no way it's, it's just never going to happen. Right. The zones tend to disparage each other. The most important thing you can do as a leader is stop that immediately. You have to honor all four zones all the time. And when people start, like the people in the incubation zone just think the people in the productivity zone are just like old and yeah. stupid. Yes. You know, and, 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 and the people in the performance zone will say, well, the people in the incubation zone are just playing games. It's corporate entertainment. And, and if you allow that disparagement, then you create the, this sort of siloed behavior and, it, and nothing changes. And, and by the way, all this time, you're not serving your customers. Competitive success or customer success. Mm -hmm. and, and what it can't honor is internal success. So the, yes. the companies that fail go, go inward. They create management systems that are internally focused. They actually meet all their goals within their, you know, their plan. Right. But the world doesn't eat the plan. So, That's right. so, That's so, right. so the, the whole thing kind of kind of goes through. And I would say the other thing about culture is that I go back to this thing about honor the zones. Part of the culture is you can't have negative culture. You can't allow negative cultures to perpetuate themselves. And often that means you have to fire a senior executive because, and they're not being malicious. They're just culturally rooted in a in a mentality that just is gonna it's gonna defeat your purposes.